In this video, we'll be attempting to cycle from Land's End in Cornwall all the way up to John O'Groats in Scotland, the entire length of the UK. The views at Land's End were amazing, but we had no time to spare with 1,500 kilometres to cycle. That way, well actually, that way to John O'Groats, but can't go in a straight line this time. Here we go then, just leaving Land's End, so let's go. Coming along the seafront in Penzance. Robot's broken down. Ah, so good. <laughs> no, he's just sorting his bag out, really. On the afternoon of day one, we covered 83 kilometers coming through Truro just as the sun was setting. Oh, okay, so day two has been pretty hilly and hot. We're just going up an absolutely brutal hill. It's so hot. And we are now leaving Cornwall. Very hilly and very hot. Camp for day two right by the River Loo. Okay, day three, back into Somerset. Day three was much easier cycling through Devon and Somerset and we were fortunate enough to arrive at home for the night. So we set off the next morning feeling completely re-energized. The gorge. Bristol on the right. That guy only went for it because he knew the camera was on really. Just after leaving Bristol, I had a broken spoke on my bike, so we had to head backwards towards a giant shop where I was able to buy a replacement and a few spares. Replace the spoke and hopefully we are now back on the road. It's about four o'clock. Yeah, here we go then, into Wales. So evenings consisting of a dip in the local river or brook in this case. Get rid of all the sun cream and sweat. I've actually already been in, but I'm just gonna paddle a bit to so you get the idea. Day five, going through the Y Valley. Day five. Feeling good, good camp spot last night. Might be time for an overtake. No! Yeah, got him. So me and Robot have just gone our separate ways for the first time on the trip. He wants to go up and over a big hill and then back down into Leominster, whereas I'm just going around it. I'm just following the contour lines. Right. <laughs> Here he is, changed his mind, come the good no, way. No, I just came, I thought something was wrong, so I came this way. No, your way was so silly. That was Google Maps, that's the fastest way. Alrighty, start of day six, and uh, we stopped at a camp spot a campsite last night. Robot didn't want to go through a fence that said private, strictly no access for some reason. Um, and also the tent's broken. One of the poles has snapped. Someone These are broke it. two joints here. Um, but it does just about stay up. It's a bit skewer, so that'll be all right. You just don't lean on these things, do you? Mm, well, it doesn't matter who broke it. <laughs> just matters that it's still up. About to make the first stop of the day. Morrison's in Wellington. But not the real Wellington, the one in the Midlands. 3 p.m. on day six, and it's been actually leisurely cycling. I've never really good. Day six was our longest yet at 135 kilometers, but unfortunately, this easy, enjoyable cycling didn't last long. All right, to give you an update, we are now at the start of day seven, and things are utterly miserable. <laughs> the whole structural rigidity of the tent is resting on this piece of material here. And yes, we should definitely have fixed this yesterday before it started raining. So we'll get that fixed today. Yeah, we're soaking wet. We don't really want to go cycling now, but I guess we'll just get on with it. Mersey side. Oh, look at this. What a hell of a bridge. We're heading up to Preston now. Um, to try and get the tent fixed or maybe get a new tent if we have to. So I ended up going to go outdoors and sourced a replacement section for the pole yeah. and the tent has never looked prouder. So end of day seven, we've covered about 80k today. A couple, detours, couple of detours to, to try and get the tent sorted. Yeah. Okay, day eight, heading up to Cumbria today. Hopefully get to Kendall by lunchtime. Right, so about 20k away from Kendall. Archer's got himself a nice little puncture. The alley is still going uh, going strong. Absolutely no problems with it. Can't say the same for the, uh, for the giant, I'm afraid. Kendall. 
we cycled deeper and deeper into Cumbria with some amazing views, arriving at a farm campsite early in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, campsite for day three day. is a... Um, <laughs> day, day three? Why am I saying day three? <laughs> day three. Yeah, cheers to day three. <laughs> Lol. Campsite for day eight is a nice little farm in Cumbria. The, uh, the lady running it has been even been nice enough to make us cups of tea. Cheers. Pleased with our, our progress. Mm. First overtake of day nine. Let's get in. Yes. Heading into Penrith this morning and then Carlisle for lunch. Rob keeps saying he was born there, which I don't think he was. He's getting it confused or something. Right, so we've just been going along this really nice section of road and Arch has managed to uh, punch his back wheel again for the second day in a row. It's probably because the pressure's not that great in the tyre already. All right, so we're just leaving Carlisle. Unfortunately, we had to stop to charge our power banks up. Um, we were almost run out of energy, so unfortunately that was a necessary stop. And in doing so, we ate way too much McDonald's. So I'm extremely full now, but we're about to cross over into Scotland. So all is well. We've just crossed the border into Scotland and there's a nice little sign which tells us that Land's End is 478 miles away, John O'Groats 360 miles away. So yeah, we're well over halfway. Just over halfway, I'd say. Okay, end of day nine. Day nine. In my thermals, definitely glad I brought these. Ah, thermals. Robot's just in shorts and a hoodie, he's freezing cold. It's pretty windy and rainy and miserable this morning, but hey, day 10, yeah, um, but you just got to press on with these things. Despite the wind and rain, we pushed on past Moffat and up a 400 meter climb on the A701. I think we're just reaching the top of the climb and according to the driver's control lines, we're about 400 meters up, which is pretty decent. Day 10 got progressively wetter and colder, which wasn't helped by yet another puncture in my back wheel. My hands are so cold that I can hardly put the pressure on there to try and get the tire off. It's so annoying. Pretty cold, pretty wet, but it's bound to happen. Oh, I can't feel half my toes. It's so miserable, but spirits are still, still pretty high. So cold. So getting to camp was all a bit of a, a quick job last night. We checked in, got the tent up, had a shower, and just got straight in the tent. The rain wasn't giving over, but neither were we, pressing through Edinburgh just before the inevitable happened. I think you all know what's going on here. You see this pothole in the middle of this nice wide road? That's what this guy absolutely ploughed into. <laughs> in my defence, I was looking down at the map, and then, yeah, I went straight into the pothole. What a great excuse. With another replacement tube fitted, we pressed on over the fourth bridge towards the highlands, where things finally started to brighten up. Oh, it's about midday, and it stopped raining. No more rain today. Oh yeah, we're so happy, even though we're still cold. It's nothing compared to cycling in the rain. Surrounded by stunning Scottish scenery, we pedaled through Perth and past some weekend cyclists and set up camp in Dunkeld. The next morning, we bumped into a trio of others doing Le Jog, staying in travel lodges and aiming to do it within two weeks. Going along the A9 cycle path now, you've got the A9 off to the right, cycle path in the middle, and the railway on the left, all running in parallel. Welcome to the Highlands. We left our rivals way back in the distance and arrived in a very touristy Aviemore for the night. At this point, we were 58 kilometers from Inverness and 300 from the finish line at John O'Groats. Day 13 of uh, Le Jog. We are going for a big day today, 145 kilometers. We made our way through the small villages on the way into Inverness, where I had a slightly more serious issue with my bike. Right, just outside Inverness, Archie has managed to get himself another broken spoke. Thankfully, I had spares purchased on day four, taped to the bike, 
So I replaced the spoke and we called in at Highland Bikes to pump up my tires properly and then we were back on the road. Keswick Bridge, just past Inverness. With less than two days of cycling left and some good news about the weather. There's no more rain forecast for the whole trip. We came to appreciate the sheer beauty of the surrounding Scottish countryside. That is a special view. All right, day 14. We are only 160 k from John and Grapes now. Yeah. The plan for today was to cycle 120 kilometers to Thurso, pitch up for the night, and then cycle to John O'Groats the next morning. However, we then got a bit overexcited and had a change of heart. All right, so the decision has just been made that we're going for John O'Groats today. 160k to do. In order to reach John O'Groats before sunset, we had to put the hammer down. Let's go, I can see the gap. I can see the gap opening up to the coast. John O'Groats, here we come. We can see the sea now, just approaching Betty Hill. Um, and then we've got probably 90k to do along the coast. First sign for John O'Groats. Get in. We're almost there. Woohoo! We're almost there. Here we go, cruising down to the sea now. Luxury. We made it robot, how you feel? Yeah, we made it. Smashed it out in two weeks. And this concludes what I hope you'll agree has been an epic adventure. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for some big things coming up on the channel.